Hello everybody, it's SOD Medhaven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the Icebreaker, the most recent premium German Tier 8 Heavy that they have added to the game. It is also the VK7201K. Now, th this tank, there's, uh, there's a lot of talk about it right now, me and my buddies. We're, we're, just, we're kind of a 50-50 in how we feel about it. There's a lot of things that could be better. And at the same time, it could be worse. So, right off the bat, let's go ahead and just jump right into the modules here. Your engine. So, before we even do power to weight, you know, top speed, reverse, the engine. Okay, it, it is dead center, right in the front. You can get set on fire from the front. You can get set on fire with high explosives to the side. I've already had a couple of matches in the past four hours that I've been playing the tank since I got it. I've been set on fire maybe six times. So that 15% fire chance, even with preventative maintenance, I, I don't feel like the 15% is uh, honest with us. Or may maybe it is, because the engine is in the front. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a little iffy. However, the one thing I do love is the 15 reverse speed, just being able to get in and out, it's nice. 30 top, 12 horsepower to ton, 900 overall. Other than, you know, being able to get shot through the front and just be like, ah, he pinned me, you know, and engine's out. <laughs> All right, so the gun, it's 128 millimeter. Your standard penetration is 226, equivalent to some of the most recent tier 8s that they've added. So like the Sergeant Slaughter, the T-54E2, and the Roger Dodger. Um, the Roger Dodger does outmatch this tank, though, with premium ammunition, because the Roger Dodger gets, like, 282, and the Icebreaker right here only gets, like, 265 or 263 with its premium. But the gun, 18.2 second reload, that is just, it hurts. It hurts a lot. You know, you get into a game, even with a fully trained crew, brothers in arms, a gun rammer, improved ventilation, you can get it down to 14.4. It, it's it's a it's an alright reload. The alpha is 490. So you do see a lot of really nice high rolls, occasionally a 600. So it, it's not bad. Especially since you're a back turret and you can side scrape really well. Now the aim time at 2.7. I'm running vertical stabilizers on this to help counteract gun dispersion and a little bit of the aim time. Gun dispersion at 0.39. It is up there. You, you do whiff a lot of rounds. As today, I'd, I'd say I'm, I'm lucky to hit like half of what I fire. <laughs> That's what it feels like. But honestly, whenever it does hit, it feels great. So accuracy on the move, accuracy on rotating turret. Trying the snapshot in this tank. You, you don't really want to try to snapshot. You can attempt it as long as you have a fully trained crew with smooth ride and snapshot but 3.28 on moving tank you'd be better off coming to a complete stop locking on waiting half a second and then firing the trigger and that should really help you out now max elevation at 15 degrees this thing struggles to back up a hill to be able to take a shot especially since the turrets on the back it's it's really weird to play with a rear mounted tank so it's it's like the mouse or the panzer 7 that i've been playing as of recent and the mouse is just fun armor all over the place so um max gun depression at five degrees you're you're gonna really struggle on those ridgeline fights you'd be better off looking for more flat areas or slight hills and just trying to avoid you know fighting a medium tank of 10 degrees on a hill because you're gonna get outmatched every single time you'd be better off pulling back down at the bottom of the hill or trying to use a corpse and push a corpse over the hill to help you use your turret armor and your hull armor. Now, the tracks on this, uh, they, they can take a 120 millimeter shell before they break. It, like, the first one will damage them and not track you. Unless you, you know, get shot from the side, it's an insta-track plus damage. But 22 degrees of rotation, it's, it, it's slow, but it's fast. You're not going to be able to outmatch light tanks coming after you. It's going to be really hard to get your gun on them. So parking yourself against a wall or using a rock to try and counteract a light tank would be your best bet with rotation. But the one thing I do love about this tank is it's hard and medium. So 
well, soft and medium. Your soft is one, your medium is 1.35. So you don't feel too much of a difference with your traverse speed. But on soft, ooh, yeah, 1.95, you lose half your power to weight and, <laughs> you know, 6.7 power to weight. It's just, oh, man, yeah, you feel like a slug. Now, the turret, 20 degrees of rotational speed. So even if you're doing a full rotation with your tracks and trying to spin your turret, you're only going to be looking at 42 in total. But view range at 380, 380 is a little bit shy. You know, whenever you, uh, if you're not running coated optics, but you have a good crew and you're running uh, ventilation and a premium consumable, you're looking at about 448 total view range with 380. And the radio, 710, it's not too bad. That's assist damage. We'll get into that later in the future. Looking to get a couple of people together to be able to make a video about that for camouflage, spot, and assist. Uh, your standard rounds, they are AP. Your premiums are APCR. So standard rounds being AP, I actually, there is one thing I can say about this tank. Your standard rounds are only 1,050. They have a 14.4 second reload. And in my opinion, that, that's really nice for making money. So you shoot a shell, 14 seconds later, you shoot another shell. That's 1,000 damage maybe. And in return, doing 1,000 damage within two shots inside of a heavy tank, it, you're, you're going to make money. I've had a couple of matches today where I've already made like 192,000 or 110,000. And then your APCR travels at 1,150 meters a second. So those are pretty quick rounds. Now let's jump into the armor here. 270 on that flat plate there. Um, it, it don't feel like 270. I've, I've had some tanks that I know don't have anywhere close to 270, even with premium, go through that flat spot. So just keep in mind, you know, heavy angles or trying to keep your lower plate covered as much as possible. Your top plate at 180 is fantastic. That top plate is just wonderful. Low plate at 160 coming around a corner. You can probably hit about this angle coming around a corner. Not against tier 10s, but against like tier 7s and tier 6s. And bait shots. Just don't overexpose the side armor. Don't let them get the track shot and do damage. Now, your top armor is only 40 millimeters. And since this is a rear-mounted rear turret and your engine is dead center, this is what I wanted to get into. So the engine location, it's just, you get overmatched by 122s, 128s. So when those hit, your fuel tank's right on top. You're going to get set on fire, and that's what I was talking about, about the 15% chance they lied. Oh, and another thing, look at that ammo. <laughs> I, I, I have no comment. <laughs> Just <laughs> don't let them behind you. Hopefully they shoot the center mass of the back turret rather than aiming just a little bit on the outsides. <laughs> but the turret, on the other hand, 250. Nice and flat. You do, you do a little bit of an angle. They still can't penetrate your 160 side armor. And then you jump your 250 from 250 up to about 260 to 265. So about, let's say, if you look at them, about there. That is the angle you're going to want to try and hit. But if you're versing tier 10s or tier 9s and they're loading premium or heat or AP, just all they have to do is try and hit closest to the cheek and it'll just go right through it. Other than that, against tier 7s and tier 6s, this turret holds up really well. Uh, the downfall, though, that hatch, gigantic. It is a little thick at 160. And coming over a hill, they're mostly going to be seeing the low plate more than the hatch. But it, the hatch is still gigantic. I mean, just look at that thing. It's huge. <laughs> Except for long range, it's a lot harder to hit this thing at long range. It is a smaller hatch from a distance. And then with the hull armor and everything else that it has, it holds up extremely well. This is a side scraper entirely with the 100 millimeters of side armor as well. Just overall 100. Try to avoid over angling or getting overmatched, which I don't know any gun in the game that can overmatch 100 millimeters. So, all right, got a replay for you guys today. This is, ooh, Tundra, Winter. And, oh, man, took nine minutes to get here. 
I need to start working on my times. But there, there's a lot to go over. It's a, it's a new tank. A lot of people, you know, they're going to be looking at it and want full detail. My opinion for it, uh, there's no point to go over the camo rating. The camo rating, it's, it's just 0.07 stationary. I mean, if you're behind large bushes, yes, you can stay fully concealed. But the second that they get within, I'd say, 310 meters, you're going to get spotted. Other than that, 1,600 hit points at max for a heavy tank. 1,600, especially in Tier 8, is actually quite a bit. There's only a couple of them that have 1,600. So the VK16801P, which is another Tier 8 Super Heavy, has 1,600 hit points. And then the low, the low only has 1,650. So the low's got more armor, more overall health. I wouldn't say armor. I think the low has less armor. It didn't... The Tiger 2 has 1650. The trade-off is you get a 128 millimeter gun with 490 alpha. So it, it, it's a really nice tank. But the replay I got for you guys today. Uh, <laughs> today was really fun. We ran into a crap load of artillery shooting AP rounds and I got insta-killed. All 1600 hit points gone. You know, I wanted to use that replay, but I got wiped out like halfway into the match and I was like, uh, that happened. So far, though, the icebreaker, it's top speed at 30. It's slow getting into the fight, but once it's there, it's got the armor to hold. Um, my first match inside, no, my second match inside this tank, I was, I was pulling out nice and slow, and it was a tier 10. You know, just, it was on Sunset Coast, and we were just cruising up to the middle. And I got detected, so I just did a slight angle. I turned my turret left, you know, cover the hatch a tad bit. Raised the gun a little bit to try and cover the hatch a little bit more. And I ricocheted 3,000 damage within the matter of maybe like 7 seconds and never got pinned. So this armor holds up extremely well. I've even ricocheted a Yagru off the side armor. So it, it's, it holds up well. So far though, I'm actually really impressed with this tank. I mean, the reload compared to PC, which I don't want to compare it to PC, is like one second difference. Gun dispersion on PC is 0.37, so here on console we got 0.39. But, you know what, it's like, the, the difference between 0.01, it's not that big of a difference. I mean, it makes a little bit of an effect. You know, it's like that, that one half inch, and that that's about it. But. So far, I, I feel like it's going to be a really good addition to anyone's garage if they want to get their hands on it. Just because it's... It just feels nice. And right there, I want to... This is something I want to throw out. Um, my first shell penetrated at that angle. And that's because I was firing AP rounds. AP rounds readjust by 5 degrees on impact. And APCR only readjusts by 2 degrees. So maybe if I was firing AP, I would have hit him. And right here, I was kind of like, I don't want to go head to head against that Type 5. Let's see if we can get a side shot. And 527 straight into the side of the Inferno. And broke his gun. That was, that was a little nice shot. <laughs> Top plate, that was an extreme angle against that STA. And speaking of which, there are three black tanks that they're giving out with some ops right now. So get out there and grind. I think it's 75,000 experience. And you get your choice between the ADC, the super lightly armored medium. It's got good camouflage at 0.3. And then you have the T-34-3 and the STA-2 Black that they're giving out this month. So get out there, get some experience. Maybe two days of playing, you know, put about 30 matches in and you got it. Now, knowing that we're really low on tanks, Getting a little bit aggressive can be the play to make. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm willing to risk my hit points for my team because the Type 4 is a big threat, especially since left side just fell and we have four tanks on this right side that we need to take care of. A Tier 9 in front of us, I am going to be loading premium to try and take him down as quickly as I can. And right there, you know, just beautiful. Somebody got a side shot in from behind him or off to the right, 
allowed me to finish him off with my 490 alpha. Honestly though, the 490 alpha on a tier 8 tank, it feels just ridiculous to be honest with you. Being able to, I mean, your reload at 14.4 seconds does slow down your DPM a tad bit. But overall, being able to hit somebody in a tier 8 and see a high roll for like 600, oh, it feels so good. Now, the Mausen, if he would have pushed up with this Type 4, we probably would have lost this area. STI, another icebreaker. Nice little snapshot right there. Didn't even worry about aiming and just took a shot. I didn't want to sit there too long because there's a Type 4 and an STI. And as I realized, this tank's pretty tall and I was like, wait a minute, can I get shots over this? Yeah, I can. And fired, it looks like it probably hit the top of the tank and ricocheted. And he's getting behind the rock, there's no shots there. Looking to see if he'll pop out in the corner, I looked at the map and realized he's, he's done, he's not coming back. So far though, it's 6 minutes in, we've done 3,500 as middle tier, and most of our damage was against tier 9s. So it's not too bad. And... It is track. Yeah, that's that, that's one thing about firing premium rounds. Premium rounds have different mechanics than standard rounds, because originally you paid gold for them. And they didn't want them to be pay to win. So what they did was is that any sort of space armor, so like tracks or anything else, they have a higher chance of being absorbed. And I don't even know where that shell hit. <laughs> but Alpha got him down, so that, that was a little... I, he had me panicking. <laughs> and I don't want to make the video too long, so we're going to go ahead and take this, because it goes for a while. Alpha gets slapped by artillery. And then light tank gets knocked out. Artillery basically pop shots somebody else. Slowly goes. This is about a good four minutes. So I just don't want to kick back and monologue for four minutes. Because it exactly wasn't that exciting. I was look, trying to get a good replay for today, but just struggled getting the matches in. We kept on getting top tier, but everyone saw the new tank and they all wanted to shoot it. But that that was actually not that bad of a match. You know, we had a team rolling at the time and, you know, we, we had communication with our numbers and it just played out a lot better. But so far, yeah, I really don't mind the icebreaker. It, it's not too bad of a tank. Um... A couple things that I would throw out though, it is slow. You know, if, if you're getting this and you're expecting to be fast, you're, you're not fast. Y you are not fast at all. That 30 top speed with 12 horsepower to ton, 12 horsepower to ton is just abysmal. It's just, you're, you're not going to hit your top speed all the time. I've, I've noticed that I was lucky to hit like 25 on flat land occasionally. And I mean, look at the crew. You know, I've, I've got a good crew. I'm running premium consumables, and it's like I, I still felt this thing being held back a tad bit. But so far, is it worth it? Yeah, I'd say it's worth it. It feels like a tank destroyer got slapped together with like a VK100. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, if, if you guys are looking to get this tank, I'd recommend it. Um, I have no problems with it. Whenever I get an ace tanker inside this thing, if I'm recording at the time, I'll try and get that out there. But, yeah, I'd say if you guys want it, it's it's cheap, honestly. It's under 10,000 gold, and you got some other heavies out there that are like 15,000. It's like, oh, that hurts, you know? But this, under 10k for just a regular package, yeah, dude, get it. It's a solid tank. Well, you guys have a great day, and, uh, yeah, catch the stream on Saturday. And Monday Madness was yesterday. So, if you guys want to check out Monday Madness, I'll see if I can get it posted up inside this video too. So, yeah, you guys have a great day. I mean, it might be at the top left. You know, I, I, I'd be pointing there, but I, I don't know. 
It should be there. Is it left or is it right? I don't know. I might be pointing the wrong way. Oh, well, don't have a camera. You guys have a great day.